The Word of God is a seed containing the very life of God. It is His agent of transformation. As you receive these words in your heart with faith, that life is released into your spirit, and your life receives a supernatural lifting. Join Apostle Joshua Selman as he brings you God's Word with simplicity and power. Prophesy to yourself inside and outside. Lembo shaba laba kapra tagede bela de bokoso fataya. The best of the seasons are here by the power of the Holy Ghost. Nem pros kaba lada baka pres kembria talabo zibaya naba. Go ahead and prophesy. Revelations 3 8. Behold, I set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Behold, I set before you an open door. I set before you an open door. I set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Prophesy. I'm making progress in my journey. The hand of God is upon me. Running with the spirit of Elijah. Make sure you are prophesying. And he said unto me, Son of man, prophesy to this dry bones. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, a rattling sound. Bones began to be joined to bones. Shada bala kata prada kade bala de boko sovereign de kapali ada baka sete prada kade bala de bones. Lord, we prophesy. Am brato ko fresh kale prada kata ria da bala da baka sato prada shala da bones. Our best days are here, celebrating the heritage of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to believe that God brought you here tonight to bless you. Hallelujah. The Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. So I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heart is open. Do something in my life that has not been done before. Change me. Let the veil tear from my eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus.
thank you for the things you are doing in this place. Hallelujah. Amazing things. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Come on, lift your hands and worship the miracle walker. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Say that we 
Ten people give them a big hug. Come on, bless one another. Tell them I bless you. It's good to see you. You have the power to bless inside and outside. I bless you. I bless you. Come on, go ahead. Bless them. It's within your power to speak a blessing. Give them a big hug and bless them. Make sure you're smiling. Hallelujah. worship team in this side of God's kingdom. Come on. Now. They deserve it. Great people. Hallelujah. Joshua 14. I trust that the Lord will bless you away tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua 14, are you there? I'll begin my reading from verse 6. Father, let your word bless your people tonight. In Jesus' name. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Take note. I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine 
in inheritance and thy children's forever because thou hast wholly followed my God. Take note. All of these things because thou hast wholly followed the Lord. And now behold the Lord has kept me alive as he said these 40 and 5 years even since the Lord spoke this word to Moses. What a long time. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo I am this day first call and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And my strength and as my strength was then even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in. Ready verse 12. Stop. He said now therefore Give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord speak in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims, the giants were there. And that the cities were a great land and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. Next verse. For an inheritance. Let me finish it up. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb. The son of Jephunneh. The Kenizzite. Unto this day. Because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Hallelujah. Thank you Father because you will bless your word. I'm preaching a very powerful message tonight. That I trust will challenge us. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Even if you don't understand it yet, you will understand at the end of the teaching. So say, give me this mountain. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to unveil to you the spiritual dimension of success. The spiritual component of success. Say it one more time. Give me this mountain. Some of you, God will answer this prayer because you mean it from your heart. One more time, say, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Now, if you've been following our teachings on the kingdom, the Bible says how that at a certain time, Joshua and Caleb were sent to a spies to spy the land of Canaan and its environs. And the Bible says they came back. A few of them came, two of them really, with very good news. They said, we saw giants, we saw different people, but the land was flowing with milk and honey. Let's go up at once. And others, their hearts melted. And on account of his courage, Moses promised him that when the time of apportioning the land comes, that land that he saw and believed would be his inheritance, he should be given. And so when the time came, he reminded Joshua. He said, Joshua, remember, over 40 years ago, when the hearts of many were failing, I said I was able to take on this mountain. Now is the time. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. There are seven mountains that have been responsible for human influence on the earth. We've talked about this, but let's do a quick revision. Please write seven mountains number one family this is where the foundation of every life is built or destroyed the family this is where values are inculcated hallelujah number two education this is where truth or error is built this is the place of molding. This is where people get mindsets. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For an average of 18 to 20 years, the average Nigerian spends that time at least educating himself. A great mountain. Great sphere of influence. Number three. The media. 
The media has an enormous influence. The largest gathering in any single meeting has been over 2 or 3 million. That was in a Benihin crusade. The largest recorded gathering of human beings. A total of 6 million within 3 days. But you can reach a total viewing audience of over 100 million within 5 minutes. The media. Mind control systems. Ready for the next one? Arts and entertainment. This mountain has a great influence. Defines many things to us. What we call sort failure. That's number what? Number five. Politics and governance. This is where legislations are made for or against the kingdom. Hallelujah. If abortion is legalized, somebody passed it into law. If God is exalted in a nation, somebody passes it into law. Politics and governance. Very, 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 very important. Hallelujah. Number six. Who can remember the sixth one? Huh? Sport is part of art and entertainment. Religion. Almost everybody is following somebody. Whether they are right or wrong, they are just following somebody. Hallelujah. Go and type wall religion and see how many followers. Religion is a powerful system. People have died for it. Hallelujah. People have gotten PhD and died the next day for a cause they believe was worth dying for. And the last one, the economy or the business world if you want to put it that way. Seven mountains that shape and mold human existence. Now please listen, this is very important because when we talk of advancing the kingdom, it must be structural and definite. Hallelujah. What we have been taught in the body is just do evangelism and bless souls. But when we talk about advancing the kingdom, it's important for us to understand the spheres of influence. Hallelujah. Every degree of influence on earth today is through the seventh one, the economy. Hallelujah. Is that true? The family is a major issue. Whatever goes wrong in the family affects society. Hallelujah. Education. Whatever they teach you, is what you will stand for, work for, and be paid for. The media. It's amazing how that in five minutes you can receive a news, whether true or false. Hallelujah. Remember that issue of that that man, that ogre of the top, ogre at the top issue. Even people in the village got to hear that news. The media. Arts and entertainment. They have informed everything that we do practically. Everybody wants to become like a, that's where success is displayed using different parameters. That's where you see sports celebrities. When anyone makes it, they get there to show you so that you will model their lives. Very important. Number five politics and governance. Hallelujah. You can have money, but if they don't give you land, you won't build. Is that correct? They can legislate a law in five minutes that will literally crumble the advancement of the kingdom of God. Like many ministers who are caught and jailed and killed in many nations. It is because some people sat down in the parliament to legislate. Is that true? Number six, religion. It's done probably the biggest harm to mankind. 
everybody believes in the existence of something bigger than himself whether he can be humble enough to accept it or not religion and finally the economy the interesting thing about the economy is that it fuels every other mountain hallelujah the bible says money is the root of all evil what does that mean the root of any tree is where the tree gets its nourishment hallelujah seven mountains say give me this mountain say one more time give me this mountain hallelujah and i have studied for quite some time uh seeking from god's word to find out how to strategically advance the kingdom of god and to be able to define success please listen to me all of these mountains have been able to define success to people there are certain things that society have told us that you must do in the family to be considered successful as a family man same thing for education same thing for media but right now with the lens of god's word it's important for believers to begin to scrutinize the things that we have upheld defined as success hallelujah for some of us success is when you get rich you have a car you travel abroad go to dubai hawaii and so on and so forth when you build a house for some of us success is when you build an orphanage all of these informations that we have about success were given up to us through one or more of these structures is that true but tonight we are going to examine god's word while the mountains and the spheres of influence were being apportioned to people caleb said this is the one i want give me this mountain i can take it i want to show you the spiritual dimension of success the second thing i want you to know tonight is that every of these mountains are controlled by spirits Did you hear what I said? Every one of these mountains are controlled by spirits. Caleb said, in that land there were certain gigantic superhuman figures called Anakims. Waiting for anybody who would dare to step into any of those fields. Can I tell you something? Listen. If you get what I'm teaching you tonight, you will accelerate your success in life that any one of these fair you choose to go there are spiritual entities keepers of the gates of these fairs hallelujah that dare to wait for any man i have studied successful people both in the world and in the church and I like studying their ideologies to find out what informed their mindsets. And I watched an interview that was conducted for Bill Gates. Again, the richest man now. Hallelujah. And they asked him, what is the secret of your success? And he said something that disturbed me. You know what he said? He said, I was at the right place at the right time. That's a scary statement. He said, and in that right place, many people had what I had. How can this be the secret of a man's success? I was at the right place at the right time. When they gave us a certain information, many people had it just like I did. But I was the one who took action. This is what he told us. The secret of his success is. Now before you get me wrong. Bill Gates is a very hard working man. Some of you say. Hey, hey, I know, uh -uh. They are the places of principles. But I want you to understand. That there is the spiritual dimension. Everybody say spiritual dimension. 
If you do not understand this, you will be cheated grossly in life. Every one of these mountains have spiritual entities. Hallelujah. God appointed Daniel and God was going to send him to one of these mountains of politics and governance. And the Bible said, paraphrasing now, how that Daniel understood the spiritual component of success and he was always praying. From his secret place, he was disturbing certain people. Hallelujah. All that they were concerned about was his prayer life. And they started finding ways. They said, King, can you pass a law just on somebody's prayer life? Because there were some, there's something called the gods of the Medians and the Persians. Say, so who is this guy? Every time we look across this fair, there's somebody defy. Are you learning something? One of the things that many people, especially young people, do not know is that spiritual. Help me, please. Either this or another man. Everybody say after me, success is Hallelujah. My friend TK is here. He's a graduate of Lagos Business School. Hallelujah. He just returned. You ask him from his spiritual perspective, he can tell you. There is no man who is extremely successful in any sphere of life that has not bowed down to something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you, brothers and sisters. In the days of Elijah, there were certain prophets who were taking over the mountain of religion and they were enjoying. Is that true? The Bible calls them prophets of... He didn't call them prophets. He called them prophets of who? Who is Baal? Prophets of Baal. They enjoyed their time during that dispensation. Because there was a goddess called Jezebel that was married to the man who sat at the seat of governance. Listen to me. I want to shorten your journey in life to achieving lasting and true success. Hallelujah. And this woman, the Bible tells us that she was the one who was overseeing those prophets. Is that true? How can a woman, they were, they were called prophets of Baal, but why did they submit to her? Jezebel. Anything that touched those prophets, she knew it from the secret place. Nobody went to tell her it was Elijah that caused trouble. Immediately Elijah caused trouble. She sent people from her palace. She said, look for this man and kill him. Are, are, you, are you getting something tonight? Every one of this mountain has spiritual entities. Because Satan is called the God of this world. And Satan has strategically, he understands that whoever takes this mountain, Whoever exerts any degree of influence upon this mountain will change the course of history, whether for or against God. Are you listening to me? And Caleb said, I know that there have been certain people in that mountain, but give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. How many of you believe what I'm teaching tonight? Because you see, a, a lot of us believe that you just get up and just walk into these mountains and just become a CEO of a company. You think so? Go and find out how many politicians do not sleep because they have to keep revisiting altars and diabolical things. Already 2015 is already being prepared. Is that true? There are... How come we have believers who have not been trained to understand times and seasons? I want to show you the spiritual dimension of success. We have studied a lot of principles. But I need you to know, this is what many young people do not know in Nigeria. They graduate with joy and excitement. 
and enter the labor market and there are keepers of the gates. They say, no way. It doesn't happen like that. Hmm. Suddenly you see somebody leaves people for a while. The next thing he steps and every gate is opening up to him. No, something happened. Did you hear what I said? Something what? Somebody gets up. The next thing he's controlling the arts and the entertainment. Flawlessly. People are buying his steps, buying everything. And you listen to it, there's nothing that edifies you, whether socially or spiritually. But you wouldn't know what would take you. Say, give me this mountain. The Bible says, listen, it says the sons of this world are wiser. Paraphrasing. Wiser. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Wake up. Grow up. The earth is more rude than you have been taught in the media. There is a fierce contention of light and darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is a paradigm that many people are not taught. They just say, oh, don't worry. Just build yourself and see how you will ride gloriously into this mountain. Hmm. Keep us at the gate. When Jesus was taking on this mountain of religion to open it up, he was coming out of the grave and this keeper said, who is this that wants to come out? He said, lift up your heads, O ye. The gates were people. Because they responded. They said, there is no man that has gone out of this realm and brought himself back except somebody in that realm calls him. But Jesus died and wanted to bring himself. They said, uh-uh, it doesn't happen that way. We are keepers of the gate. He said, I'm being lifted in Shen doors. What kind of doors? Why didn't he just say doors? They have been there. In Shen doors. He says, somebody wants to enter and prove a point in this mountain that the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. And the gates answered. They said, interesting. So, we know many people, but who is this guy called the king of glory? He needed a reintroduction. What makes you believe? Listen. The moment John was born, the spirit of the Antichrist began to move in the scribes. They said, are you the one we are expecting? Because the gates have been informed that somebody will come in a time and wreck havoc. So they kept searching. They thought it was John the Baptist. That's why they caught him. The moment Jesus announced, behold the Lamb of God, that was it. He said, make sure this guy dies. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. The labor market in Nigeria are governed by spirits. Did you hear what I'm saying? There is no reason why we should have so many people jobless. They are governed by wicked spirits. I've had the opportunity to meet a few successful people and I can tell you their success is irritating. I don't envy it forever. Let me tell you something. It's not like you cannot enter, but they will give you the condition for entering. Are you getting me? When these gates stop you, the first question they ask you is, where is your allegiance? Because nobody enters here for nothing. No. Who are you representing? Who sent you? You want to build a bank. You want to own a bank. They will ask you, who sent you? Whose cause are you representing? You want to come out as a man of God and be great and build a big ministry. They will ask you. And then they will give you an option. They will say, here it is. Is 
there is a way we can negotiate. This is what Satan came to do to Jesus Christ. He said, I know that these are the keys you came to collect. So let's negotiate. If you bow to me, I will ease this journey. Say, give me this mountain. When Jesus was born, the signal got to Herod immediately. Immediately. Gates. Ancient doors. That really govern what we call success. Satan is not a fool. He was once in heaven. He has positioned strategically. America is considered a successful nation. They are in debt of 17 trillion US dollars. You know how many generations it will take to pay? Because the devil orchestrated it intelligently to mortgage the destiny of the generations after them. A time will come it will hook them. And when it hooks them, mammon will call them for negotiation. And they must negotiate. Who are these kind of people who want to take these mountains? They will ask you, where are you coming from? Say, I'm a graduate of ABU. They say, so what? Go and ask how many people have come to this gate are reversed. Sometimes you want to use force and you sustain casualties. Tonight, I want to show you, if you understand this singular teaching, you will gain accurate explanation to what is happening in this country. What Satan is seeking. Listen, the youth is the fruitful part of the nation. Is that true? They are the fruitful part. Satan knows what they want. Satan knows that every young man that graduates, every young man that gets married, is looking for certain things, establishment and the rest. And he said, close those doors. So that when they are pressured, they will come back for negotiation. And that's what is happening. Is that true? mysterious success and wealth that cannot be explained. Any man just travels and comes back smiling. He cannot even explain what happened. All he, that's why when he hears you talking business principles and titans, he says, ah, that's your cup of tea. He says, look at these suffered people. Hallelujah. Is that true? That's why there are certain rich people that don't bless. They can't bless, not even their wives. It's not that they are greedy. They bow to something. This is the condition for it. Other people, a man cannot sleep with his wife. Certain conditions are given. There are people who, listen, let me tell you something. I met a man. I met a man, maybe early this year, in Abuja or so, and he actually came out of one devilish, dirty business sect and all of that. And he said something. He said, they are only allowed to do any business transactions on Mondays and on Fridays. It's happening in your country. You will be surprised if I tell you those who are involved in this. Only when? Very busy people, but they are so free throughout the day. You break that rule, you pay for it. Hallelujah. And they called him somewhere. He was supposed to do a business something with somebody. And when he went there, they called him by 10 a.m. Pastor. He went and sat down in the parlor. Nobody attended to him till about 7 or so in the morning. They just left him there. Say, Ogado, oh you better let your eyes not sleep. Warn your eyes to stay awake. Hmm. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the King. Satan wants a situation where everyone in the next few years who will stand in this mountain must be people who are bowed to him. And so godlessness, the, these are the mountains that will rebuild the tower of Babel. Are you listening to me? 
But the Bible says, Obadiah 21, saviors shall arise out of another mountain called Zion and they will judge the mountain of Esau. What is it about these mountains? Hmm. Saviors shall arise. Because you see, when the prophets of Baal were bowing down, little did they know that there were 7,000 others under the custody of Obadiah. They were being prepared to contend. And one day, Elijah said, come on, there's no hiding. Let's climb the mountain and deal with this issue. If God be God, the God that answers by fire, I say is God. He said, Baal, we are on a mountain now. Are you learning something? Let me tell you. If all, I'm, I'm not talking about 10,000 naira as a teacher or something just one small room for you and your or if that's what you want nobody will contend with you just get it you can sell the charge card and get it but there is a level it's like there is a spiritual meter the moment you rise they say uh -uh, no way it doesn't happen this way but the bible says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit Hallelujah. Many of our loved ones are applying job to job to job to job to job with every kind of qualification. Nothing is happening. There are many people who have tried everything they know to do, every principle. But it's because they do not understand the spirituality of life. That's why wealthy and successful people don't have many friends. They only have their kinds of circles. You can't talk with them. You can't relate. Your vocabulary is not their vocabulary. One more time. Say, give me this mountain. This is what is happening in Abuja. There are altars and sacrifices serviced every day. Every day for the success of people. But we have many believers who just get up and we just mumble a few confessions and we run and we believe we are coming to enter this mountain and the gate say, you think so? Even Jesus, they ask him a question first before allowing him to enter. Hallelujah. You are ready with the documentary? You watch a documentary now for five minutes. Just five minutes that will challenge you. Hallelujah. Please make sure those outside have it too. Five minutes. Hallelujah. As I began to study these things, I found out that I was not alone in this pursuit. There were so many people that God had revealed this thing to. Hallelujah. Is the volume okay? Just take your time, set it, and then play. It was August 1975, and the Lord had given me that day a list of things that I had never thought about before. He said, this is the way to reach America and nations for God. In every city of the world, an unseen battle rages for dominion over God's creation and the souls of people. This battle is fought on seven strategic fronts, looming like mountains over the culture to shape and influence its destiny. Over the years, the church slowly retreated from its place of influence on these mountains, leaving a void now filled with darkness. When we lose our influence, we lose the culture, and when we lose the culture, we fail to advance the kingdom of God. And now, a generation stands in desperate need. It's time to fight for them and take back these mountains of influence. The mountain of government. Where evil is either restrained or endorsed. The mountain of education. Where truths or lies about God and his creation are taught. The mountain of media. Where information is interpreted through the lens of good or evil. The mountain of arts and entertainment, where values and virtue are celebrated or distorted. The mountain of religion, where people worship God in spirit and truth.
or settle for a religious ritual. The mountain of family, where either the blessing or a curse is passed on to successive generations. And the one mountain they all depend on, the mountain that fuels and funds all the other mountains. The mountain of business, where people build for the glory of God or the glory of man, where resources are consecrated for the kingdom of God or captured for the powers of darkness. Those who lead this mountain control what influences our culture. The last 50 years, we've seen the most rapid moral decline in history. The culture we inherited from our forefathers is disintegrating before our eyes. What kind of world are we leaving for our children and grandchildren? As long as the business mountain is held by enemies of the gospel, funding for the other mountains will always be constrained, and any efforts to advance the kingdom of God will be hindered. Imagine God's people reclaiming their cities and government, in the arts and entertainment, in the media, in education, in the family, in religious influence, but only limited by their imagination and not by a lack of finances. It's possible, but first, we must take back the mountain of business. God's move to take this mountain back has already begun. Thousands and thousands of business leaders in every major city across the nation are filling arenas to learn from business leaders and hear the gospel of Christ. 90% of people working in the marketplace believe in God. 78% believe spirituality and business mix. 70% say that because of their faith, they find meaning and purpose in life. There are over 56 million Bible-believing Christians working in the marketplace. A vast army of God waiting to be truly engaged in the battle. Yet this strategic army and battlefront has largely been left ignored by the church. More than 90% of church members do not feel they are being equipped or trained by the church to apply biblical faith in their day-to-day -day life. The business mountain is so strategic because that is the place of influence. When you look at culture, so much of culture is defined by what happens in business. If we would use the wealth of the world to bless the world, and bless it not only to distribute to the needy that which they need. When you bring economy and economic benefit to a nation or a culture, uh, then you have influence in that culture. People, as they're transformed, who will transform all the spheres of society. It is time to reclaim the seven mountains and bring the life of God back into our culture. Hallelujah. Right, praise God. Let's continue. Were you blessed? Seven mountains. Powerful. Hallelujah. So there is a spiritual conspiracy. Hallelujah. To rob believers of meaning and fulfillment in their lives. And listen, for as long as all that we preachers keep teaching people is do your quiet time, be nice, get up, be happy, a time will come there will be more trouble than the people can handle. Because very soon they will find out they need to get married. They will find out they need to take care of children. Is that true? They will find out they need to get a job. They will find out they need to at least build a house where they will put their heads under. And then that's where the trouble begins. Say one more time, give me this mountain. If the youth in Nigeria do not understand the spiritual dimension of success. Listen to me. I am telling you, there is going to be big trouble in this country. The media did a documentary for us one time. And you saw how that less than 10% of people who ever graduate in the university ever get the opportunity to be absorbed in the labor market. This is scary. I was talking with someone and he told me something. He said over 75% of the jobs in this country cannot secure the people who are working. 
You know what they call job security. That you can guarantee. In fact, the person was telling me that there are only four jobs based on his analysis that he can call secure jobs. Lecturing, military, and I, I can't remember the other two that he gave. Anything teaching or military and then farming. You are working in farming or any farming institute or something. Go and ask the average graduate who is working. Say, what is the name of where you are working? Say, I don't even know. It's just there after three months. Say, what happened to that job? He said, oh, the person and the job, nobody even knew what was happening. So this concerns you. Because many of us are just happy. You have applied all the principles. And there is a place for that we've taught. But I want you to know that until you compel these spiritual entities to bow, there must be a higher operation of the spirit. This is what will grant you access to enter and not only reign, but not, not reclaim as dethrone everybody, but give God space in that mountain to begin to find expression. Are you getting blessed? One more time, say, give me this mountain. The journey of success in the kingdom begins with defining your purpose for success and your allegiance to God. This is very important. The Bible says Moses kept, I mean, Joshua kept saying, Caleb will get this mountain because he wholly followed the Lord. There must be a basis for these mountains to open up for you. I want to ask you a question tonight. What is your, what, why do you want to be successful? Why do you want to be prosperous? If, if the circumference of your desire for prosperity is so that you can have enough money to marry or feed your children or do all of this, that mountain will not open up for you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Your allegiance must be defined I was listening to a woman of God. She was talking and she said that a particular governor's wife went and met a very wealthy business mogul in this country to just talk to him and ask for an assistance and something for the church. And he laughed and looked at her. He said, it should never be hard that I will ever do anything to support the church. He said, it should never, 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 never. It cannot be hard. Believe us. Open your eyes and see that there is a conspiracy behind the scene. And this conspiracy did not just start. When they started it decades ago, it looked like an impossible mission. But Satan is very patient. It's believers that are impatient. Satan kept allowing one generation to die. The ones who would preserve this truth to die. Now we are the generation in between. We will either give up and lose all on it. Or stand and say, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I foresee that in the next five to ten years in this country, nobody will... who The, the spirituality of wealth had never been a mystery. Go and ask the Freemasons and the Illuminatis. They've known this for years. Hallelujah. People make money off war that happens in this country. For every time there is bomb blast, somebody is making money. This is somebody's business. You think he will stop? For as long as there is no electricity in this country, somebody's business is blossoming. You believe the person will sit down and allow laws that will support it to be legislated? Say one more time, give me this mountain. Wake up. Don't let people fool you. Take responsibility over your destiny and walk to God and say, Lord, I declare my allegiance. This is our concentration this night. We are not really talking about principles. I want to bring you to a point where the ultimate test of your success in life will be a clear definition of whose side you are standing. If that question is not answered, forget about success. Did you hear what I said? I am telling you this. Whether success in family, in education, whatever it is, the world is becoming fierce and unfriendly by the day. And you will need to define who are you in fraternity with? 
There is no issue of standing here or there. No. No. As you rise in success, the, the place that you are standing becomes more defined. Beyond your adherence to principles, you will need to stand and define it before God and before men that this is my agenda. I am a kingdom addict out to support the cause of the kingdom. There is no pretending it. There is no being diplomatic about it. This is where I stand. When that happens, God that you have declared to will be the ones to compel these forces to bow. Are you listening to me? This is very important. That's why there are certain people, some of you, when your loved ones begin to rise to certain levels, the enemy just takes them away, out of the scene. And the whole family returns back to square one. Another person tries to rise, they just take them away. They say it doesn't happen that way. We have been the ones governing blessings and wealth in this village or in this place. Now you didn't grow up in the village, you grew up in the town. You watch CNN, Cartoon Network. And you suddenly believe that Cartoon Network has wiped them away. They are saying, we are still here. That's why those guys don't die in the village. People don't die anyhow. They live old. They say, I'm watching. 90 years, I'm still strong. No glasses, I'm watching. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. You must make up your mind that right now you will define your allegiance. Prosperity will never come to you until you do not, until you define for what cause is going to be used. Without ambiguity, there must be clarity. And you're going to say, Lord, this is for your kingdom. This is why we train and build people in the world every time. This issue of hiding things, I am telling you the truth. Do you know every time I get to meet people, pastor, people I used to know years ago, Abuja and Aram, once you see them, you see that there is, there is a disappointment in God. It's as if, God, what did you do? I served you. I served you. I was fellowship president. I was this and that. This is not fair. A lot of people go to God and say, God, this is not fair. But I need you to know, you can sit down and call God fair or not. If you do not rise up to realize that life in its entirety is spiritual. Success in its entirety is spiritual. You start spiritually, it is maintained spiritually, you will end it spiritually. If you can get this revelation, I've saved you frustration of decades. Hallelujah. Caleb saw giants, yet he didn't even talk about them. He said, Joshua, you just give me. If God will be with me, these giants are a simple case. There are many of us right now. You're going to be released to the labor market. Many of you are happy. Believing it is through your uncle or your auntie or through one connection. Let me tell you early enough. Stop wasting your time. Because if you do get that job, you will find out that it's easier to get a job than to stay there. When you enter there, you will find out that there is a war that has been going on. Just like our brother came to share that a woman just looked at him and didn't like him. Welcome to the root shock of this system. This is how it works. It's not strange. It's not like she victimized him. It's how Satan designed the system to work. And then one day you announce that you are going to build a secondary school in your community. And you see everybody just come to laugh. And they go back and sit on their mountains and say, Alright, you build the school. You know, see, believers, let me tell you something. If you do not understand, or you just get up and say, ah, I want to get married. You just see a lady and say, you want to get married. Marry. As you finish the marriage, you will suddenly find out that your whole life and the marriage has no life. To an extent, you will be begging 10,000 for school fees. What is happening? Everybody say, give me this mountain. These are mind control systems. What is, what is the aim of Satan putting gates in these places? To make sure 
that God's value system and the advancement of the kingdom bringing many to righteousness that means you cannot do business till you play crooks and pranks is that true and now that's the order of the day it has a name what do we call it corruption is that true a lady cannot get a job with the dignity of kingdom integrity until she sleeps with somebody it's not about sexual pleasure brothers and sisters there are prostitutes around are you hearing what i'm saying it's about causing the zion of god to compromise Praise God. Hmm. And then you get up and say, God is leading me to be the chairman of a local government or to be a governor. And you just get up and stroll. You see us pray, you are just laughing and say, these people, the wisdom that I have, really? You will see the seats like this. Go and sit down. You will be able to see it. It's free. Go and sit down. The Bible says, and he has been exalted above every other name, whether they be thrones or dominions or every name that is named. Not just in this realm. There are human beings that travel to astral realms. I told you this thing when we were talking about, what were we talking about? I cannot remember. I told you about the UFOs or this. I have a documentary in my laptop of excavators that were digging into the earth and they found out that there was a 13 story building they found somewhere 13 story building beyond, beyond this earth occupied by aliens the aliens killed one of the people just touched his heart and see let me tell you i'm opening you up to something you may learn when you are 50 years old when life has whipped you and you are saying half that's how many what jubilee down 50 is what golden jubilee you now say god what is this Many of our parents know this thing. That's why they are quiet. When they see us just jumping, I must get there. They just keep quiet. They say, you don't know what I've been through. I had zeal. Some of them were planning to work in railway corporation. They were happy. They had people to connect them. Believers, hear me. There is a spiritual dimension to life. These gates are occupied by wicked spirits with one primary agenda to compel men to bow to Baal, to bow to the spirits that are responsible for these gates. When you bow, it will open up to you. The day you stop bowing, it will check you out. It doesn't matter what level. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why wealthy people are more concerned in maintaining their altars than doing business. Let me tell you the truth. You don't see them. They hire people. There are all kinds of occultic groups and organizations in this country that have a lot of people belonging. That's what has been responsible for their success. But hear me, there is a kind of people arising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is an uncompromising army arising. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. We have been staring at these mountains and they've been staring at us. But tonight you will need to say, give me this mountain. I can take it. I can take this mountain without compromising. I can stand. Hallelujah. You can take the mountain of media. You can take the mountain of everything. Where you will know, anywhere you are, you know that God is there. You are not pretending it. You know, there is this ugly thing that believers do in the name of socialization. They are afraid to stand ruthlessly for God because they suspect God may fail them. So they say, let's keep one leg here. God has been used to disappointing people. In case, if it doesn't work, I quickly move my leg here and I say, I was not there in the first place. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, if God is to bless you, you must be uncompromising. Wealth is spiritual. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wealth is what? Spiritual. Oh, I, I shared with the leader something. Maybe if we have time, we'll look at it before we pray. There are some things that are not found in the earth realm. 
Are you hearing me? There is a kind of wisdom that produces success. The Bible says, Job speaking, he said, we went to Hades where dead people are and said, they said, we have heard of his fame, but we don't know where it is. He went to the mountains where people excavate rocks and the rest. And they said, we've not heard of it. He said, it is not within the sight of the living. There are certain dimensions of success that is not in the earth realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You manifest it in the earth realm, but you don't get it here. It's not a commodity that can be transacted here. Uh -uh. You must leave this earth realm and get it from another realm. Then you will come back and transact it. I show you a mystery. Let me share with you a personal testimony of something that happened to me. One time I was praying. And when I was praying, please listen. I was praying and I began to sense an unusual presence. It was like my spirit was leaving my body. And when I was praying, suddenly, watch this. I saw a being just stood. Maybe, maybe about 18 to 21 feet tall. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? A mighty, it looked like these sea creatures, these antelopes, not, you know, these big sea creatures. The eyes alone are, are bigger than the head of a man. Two red fierce eyes and the tail was a serpent, a real snake. I don't know how that kind of creature was. And he was looking at me. I was looking at it. This is not some metaphysical jargons. I was looking at it and it was looking at me. Hallelujah. And you know what he told me? You want me to tell you? He spoke to me. And he says, so you believe that you are going to bring God's people into blessings. That's what he was looking at me. Everybody say, give me this mountain. I feel sorry for believers who just sit down and believe that because of the connection they have, success will come. It won't work that way. The world is changing. It's changing fast. The earlier you know this, you stand your ground and you command victory. He said you will arise and shine for your light is come. Hallelujah. I shared with you about the man who came for miracle service here with HIV. How did he get the HIV? He was not promiscuous. When I saw him, I said, ah, this man is an elderly man and he's a gentleman. He said he was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him literally with a syringe and said this is HIV virus injected it into him and he woke up in this realm with HIV I want you to listen I'm not scaring you I'm only opening your eyes the Bible says blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm upon my holy mountain if you do not understand this there is a rootless shock waiting for you are you hearing what I'm saying give me this mountain when we finished we finished the miracle service. I went home. Now, I'm not, see, don't get me wrong. I'm not the kind of person that sees demons behind everything. No, no. I'm an intelligent person. Are you listening to me? But I went home. The protocol department are here. They were there with me. As soon as I got home, I saw a bed inside our, inside our, the pavement. There is no human way a bed, even an, even a, maybe a snail can get to enter there. It was moving around. My neighbor saw it and quietly entered and locked her door. She said, Joshua, Selma will come and handle it. Immediately I came out. I sensed in my spirit. It was counselor. Immediately I saw it, I looked. And I looked at it very well. I knew that this was not just... See, there are some realms that you are not creating any effect in the spirit. So you are not an issue for Satan. He's concentrating on those who are making things happen. So you think you are advancing spiritually. Because you think nothing is happening. I'm just praying five minutes and things are working. Keep rising. Just keep rising. A time, you will, come, a time will come when the effect becomes severe. And at that point you will notice that it's not as funny as you think it is. I show you a mystery. So the Bible says, woe to them. When we talk about prayer, when we talk about staying in the word of God, for many of you, you don't see the need. You say, whether I pray or I don't pray, things happen for me. Continue. Continue. You have not created an effect. You throw a small stone. The ripple is just a little. 
but you carry a rock and throw it while that happens the fishes inside start coming out what is going on everybody say give me this mountain we're going to pray because tonight you must define what you want to do with success for you to ever arrive there this is the same thing they will tell you when you go to a herbalist place are you hearing me Imagine that you are in a herbalist right now. This is the exact question. They won't ask you how many books you have read. They will tell you, are you ready to come into fraternity? As far as they are concerned, that's the most important thing. You say yes. They say, all right. Prove to us that you will not fail us. That's the concept of covenants. You do different things to prove that you will stand. And then they open your eyes and once in a while they keep reminding you that they are around hallelujah do you know how the illuminati initiate people let me explain something to you wealthy people billionaires let me tell you how you get initiated you get you don't get initiated by going to a place you get initiated through your imagination what that means is if i want to initiate you into the illuminati you will stand you will close your eyes and i'll be initiating you this is how they initiate people. Close your eyes. They now say, imagine a door. Now enter that door. There is something carry. You would think it's just some spooky imagination. Then you will find yourself there truly. And you will find the person who is imagined. From there, your imagination is useless. They continue the ceremony. These are not realms. This is what Job said. He said, this wisdom, they went to the place of the dead, Hades. He said, uh-uh. They went to certain places. Do you know how many people travel in and out of this earth realm to come back with innovations and come back with things that create waves? And many believers are just laughing. Say one more time, give me this mountain. Caleb said, we went and spied it. And I knew I was able to take it. There were giants there. Somebody brought them there. Is that true? Brought them there. Let me tell you something. You will find these spirits in the labor market. Hear me. You will find these spirits in family life. You want to get married. You will find it on your job. When you enter and get the job, it's only one thing. You will find it again. There are people who have been in a place. They got the job. But they are in that position for donkey years. And you find out that these are the people who truly love God. Because the devil knows that every time they rise, they will create space for the agenda of God to find expression. Is that true? This is what the devil is afraid of. He's afraid of agents. Everybody say agents. Because when you rise in this mountain, God can find expression through a mortal vessel to save sinners. Are you listening to me? To fund the advancement of God's kingdom. Imagine that you have a company, you are a CEO of a company. You can legislate. 7 o'clock there is devotion. 7 to 7.30. Are you willing? No. Have a nice day. Are you listening to me? This is not the issue of being good or bad. This is the value. You place it. You say, why are you too spiritual? I say, that's exactly why we are successful. That is exactly why we are successful. Hmm. Wealthy people have little places in their offices. One place where nobody enters. They are the only ones. Is that true? As beautiful as their offices are, they must find some certain places. And once there is time, they don't care what kind of business deal. They say, Mr. Man, you are here because of what I'm doing. If I stop doing it, you won't come again. Excuse me. And you see many people just standing for hours. The man is not coming out. Later he says, I'm ready to see you. And they don't know what it is that happens. I bring to you the spiritual dimension of life life is more spiritual and that's why our theme for this year our year of supernatural exploits daniel eleven thirty two, 32 it says they that know their god so everybody knows their god everybody knows their god that's the secret of exploit he said they that know their god they shall be and they shall do exploits let me tell you, you don't gather every week in Koinonia just by magic or mistake. If you think it's a mistake, open a ministry. Just open it in front of social center. Where you are sure you will see people and find out whether somebody will come. 
Life is spiritual. Are you listening to me? That's why every department in Koinonia, whether you are snapping or you are cleaning flour, you take it spiritually. Is that true? Many of you have kicked away the spiritual dimension of life, calling it fanatism. You have allowed secular humanism to bring you to a point where you feel when you apply these principles, you apply the law of attraction, it will just work. You apply... <laughs> Look, let me tell you the truth. Brothers and sisters, many have tried it before you. Learn from them. Don't learn from yourself. Learn from them. I saw my father go through things I could not understand. I've said this thing again and again. I saw my mother go through things. My sister had been looking for a job for years. I taught her this principle and prayed with her. It wasn't up to two weeks. They called her in Benway State that she has a job. I said, that's right. Give me this mountain. Now, devil of darkness. Give me this mountain. This is what some of you need to do for your loved ones. You have been handling the issue psychologically. You have been saying, see, you see, well, if not because of this, your third class. Ah! God would have helped you. You said people are doing something. You read fishery. Why didn't you at least try and add it with something? Yet you are hearing that a woman slept with a man that has never seen the four walls of a university and they carried her made her the secretary. She's the one who is interviewing you. Does it not let you see that life is spiritual? See, those who are waiting for God to do something, stop wasting your time. If you don't take charge of your life and destiny, you may sit down there forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take this message to your loved ones especially those in the labor market you want to get married things are not working anytime things go wrong get to the realm of the spirit and find out first you lose a lot of things see if you go to the realm of the spirit and you find out that things are in check then come back and find out the principles of life that are to make things work but first consult with the realm of the spirit this is a mistake with a lot of people the realm of the spirit is the last bus stop a particular woman wanted to see me. She said, Kai, they have problems. I say, ah, this guy is young. I say, see what this woman is saying. If I am a consultant gynecologist and you have problem, and I say, I want to give you injection, will you say, ah, you are young, or you will turn, let me give you the injection. This is what, this is the problem people have. Highest praise to the king. Highest praise to the king. That devil over your destiny is a liar. You will break forth. You will break forth on every side. You will break forth. He said, they that know their God, they shall be strong. Say, I know my God. Say it, I know my God. I am strong and I will do exploits. Say, I know my God. I can take this mountain. Yes, I can take this mountain. Who told you you cannot do clean business until you compromise? Who told you you cannot get a job until you sleep with another man? That is the language of Baal. I like you to, uh, to see, step into life with an understanding. Say, Satan, you can fool people, but I spent my fruitful years building. I'm not just stepping into the labor market just like a graduate. I'm stepping as an ambassador. I have a character on myself. I have a kingdom that I'm representing. Therefore, open up unto me. Give me this mountain. I tell you that mountain will open. I'll show you a secret tonight. In this mountain. I show you a secret. I show you a secret. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Don't sit back there wondering why things are not moving. You must contend in power. When Daniel was about to legislate, hear me. Hear me, listen. Daniel was about to legislate. He said, and I, Daniel, understood by books. The moment Daniel found out that it had been written, the captivity of the nation of Israel from Babylon. He went to prayer. He was consulting spiritually. And things were happening. He did not go. Listen. Listen. He, he never went to Nebuchadnezzar or Darius palace. Because that's not where things happen. He went to his secret place. 
when he began to pray he was praying there but from the palace those spiritual entities were saying who is forcing this gate to open and they began to move in human vessels and they said oh king listen what is it about prayer that will make people beg a king to set a law you now understand why they are kicking the ten commandments you now understand why they are doing a lot of things they want to cause every to close every door so that any man that will come can i tell you something the agenda of satan is that a time will come in this country even to get ten thousand naira you must bow to bear i tell you the truth it's happening it's just that some of you are still depending on your parents that's why you have not seen it in its full gravity a time will come even to collect salary you will bow but where are those uncompromising people the seven thousand under the custody of obediah who will not bow to bell we know our god we have been strengthened he has done mighty things in the past we will pay the price shout it give me this mountain shout it one more time give me this mountain lift your voice and begin to pray I will take the mountain of family. I will take the mountain of the economy. Come on now. You know where God is sending you to. Lift your voice and pray. Things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. Life is spiritual. Life is governed spiritually. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Your success is tied to your spirituality. Your success is tied to your spirituality. They that know their God, only God can make principles work. They will not work independent of God. Every successful man has bowed to somebody somewhere. I tell you the truth. Every money, every money is blood money. Whether from the blood of human beings and demons or the blood of Jesus Christ, every success is spiritual. Give me this mountain. I will conquer. I will conquer. I take this mountain. I take this mountain without compromising. I take the mountain. I wore a good warfare with the prophecy. I wore a good warfare. I pay the price. Hallelujah. Shut up, Listen. Listen. If God has called you into the ministry of worship, that's the mountain that is waiting for you. You are going into the media, there is a mountain. You are going into business and finance. Finance concerns everybody. You heard it from the documentary. Let me tell you something. I want you to pray now and say, Lord, I'm not confused about my allegiance. I declare to you right now, money will not change me. Marriage will not change me. Lift your voice. I declare my allegiance. So tokete basha. Ma prokoto sekete. I'm not just a social being. I'm a spiritual being. Marriage will be an opportunity for you to find expression. Well, to be an opportunity to fund the activity of the kingdom. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, bless me. I will advance the kingdom. I will build ministries for you. I will fund the agenda of the kingdom. There's no pretending. There's no hiding. If you declare your allegiance, 
Let me bring a word of comfort for some of us. There are many of us. Hear me. You have refused to compromise. Some of us, that's why you are paying the price. Rejoice. Because your salvation draweth nigh. Are you hearing me? Rejoice. Refuse to compromise. You make heaven proud when you stand. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. But those who know their God are strong people. Hallelujah. Hear me. Other people are building their shops with blood money and demonic things. But you come in the dignity of kingdom integrity. It will cost you. You will suffer. But you hold on. Let your redeemer show up. See, let me tell you something. Hear me. Malachi chapter 4 prophesied about the recession he said a time will come the earth will burn like oven and all those who do it wickedly can i tell you something this thing you hear people announce about wealth transfer is not some human imagination it will happen but you must declare your fraternity this is the greatest secret i know of success Success is spiritual. I bring you a message of hope. Your certificate will only make meaning when your allegiance has been declared. So the one you are alle- the one you are standing by will back you. He must you must have a godfather. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray. All the mountains that you desire to open up to you, hear me? Listen, you're going to say, I come in the name of the Lord. This is what happened when David was going to confront Goliath. He said, you come to me with your bow and spheres. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. When it was time for Elijah to destroy the prophets of Baal, he said, make 12 stones. He reminded God, make 12 stones. Regarding the 12 tribes of Israel, God's covenant nation. And he said, pour water. If God does not respect me, he will respect what is on the altar. Can I tell you something? Don't let anybody fool you. Life is spiritual. Right now, lift up your voice and begin to speak to the mountains you desire to open up to you. Come on now. They will share you. Mountain of family. Be open. Come on, pray. Mountain of finance. Be open. Be open. Mountain of media. Be open. Be open. I confront you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. I confront you in the name of the captain of the horse of of Israel. In the name of Jesus, be open for the people of God. Nigerian labor market, be open. Be open. Be open for the people of God. Doors of marriages. Be open for the people of God. We take this mountain. We take this mountain. Let's pray. 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 Let's p
Listen. 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 I have taught you a powerful secret. Keep it forever. You will produce mysterious success that no one will understand. See? See? This is what, hold on. This is what makes people criticize some of us because they cannot see where the addition is done. We don't come in the open to add one plus two plus three. Everything is established in the secret. And when people see the result, because it does not add up, people begin to criticize. You come for miracle service, you see people parked inside, outside, sitting on the fence. Where is the publicity material? Where did they get publicity from? I'm teaching you a mystery. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people paying thousands and thousands to be on air. I was sitting down praying when CBN came and said they wanted to make a documentary on me. I've been in over maybe 70 channels around. I've not paid a cover for it. Look, when you settle things spiritually, no matter how long, you can start rejoicing even when anybody has not seen anything because you know, you know the powerhouse. You know where things are done. Hear me? Let me advise you. You want to apply for a job, don't just hear about an opportunity and carry your CV. Uh-uh. Kings don't rule like that. You know what to do. Carry your CV and lock yourself. Keto Pariata. Confront those mountains. Say, give me this mountain. They will call you. See, hear me. You've been praying. A husband has not come. A wife has not come. The first thing is, find out what principles that have been put in the written word that you are violating. Once you get those things straight, go and lock yourself. The Bible tells us, lock yourself and stay there and generate energy in the spirit. Can I tell you something? No matter how long it takes, light and darkness cannot stand. See, and when your victory comes, it is sustained because you know how it came. It's not trial and error. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two, five minutes and we'll be done. You are going to pray for your neighbor. Neighbor, don't hold anybody who is not serious in this very critical moment of prayer. Listen. The Bible says, and if two of you shall agree, as touching anything, if two, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now ask your neighbor in one minute, what mountain is trusting God to bow? Just ask him and let him whisper it to you. Because, and you don't keep quiet. If it's marriage, say marriage. If it's business, say business. Are you ready to pray now? Are you ready to pray now? In the next two minutes, I'd like you to pray like a warrior. Pray like a warrior. I agree with you. And we come in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Let genotype be changed. S S to A A. Let mountains of delay give way. Jobs be open. Marriages be open. Business connections be open. 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 
be open, be open in the name of Jesus. Admission, be open. Riot results, be open. Higher institutions, be open. The labor market, be open. We open you up. We confront powers. We confront powers. We challenge you in the name of the Lord through the greatness. Of the power of the Holy Ghost, you will bow. You will bow. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. 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 For many of you whose prayer life is down. You will be cheated in life. James 5.13 Don't open there. We're out of time. James 5.13 If you can give it to us from the Amplified. It says, Is any of you afflicted? What is the remedy? Let him pray. It didn't say let him sing praise and worship. Or let him go ahead running. Is any of you afflicted? Ill-treated? Or suffering evil. What is the remedy? He should. Say one more time. He should. Hear me. Listen. This is the biblical key. To break through. Out of any situation. It's in the Bible. Listen. Job. In all of Job's affliction. He didn't pray. Are you hearing me? He discussed with wise men. He spoke with elders. But he did not pray. Give me Job 42 verse 10. The Bible says, And God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed. Not when he discussed. Many of you are talkative. You run from pillar to post. Telling everybody your problem who cannot help. So are you hearing me? It says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes when he prayed. When he Jonah in all of those boys terror storm, Jonah didn't pray until he entered the belly of the fish. He started praying and the fish brought him out. I bring you a solution. Anything that has challenged you, take time to pray with understanding and revelation. The world that will stop you is not yet there. A sickness is afflicting you. Pray. Generate energy in the spirit. Many of us have not prayed for our lives. You've not prayed for the issue of life partner. You think it's a sign of desperation. Whereas it's because the devil knows that warriors are coming out of your children and will shake nations. It was because of Jesus Christ thousands of other children were killed. The devil can wipe a nation. The devil can throw the economy of a nation down because of one person may you be that one person that will threaten hell hallelujah let me agree with you and pray with you you will come back with testimonies see testimonies are not magic testimonies are a product of the open heavens that happens when demonic entities are displaced are you hearing me Testimonies are not magic. It's not an issue of trial or error. When the resistance stopping you gives way, you must have a testimony. And the prince of Persia stopped the prayers of Daniel, the answer, until Gabriel was sent. Meanwhile, Daniel was still praying. If he had stopped, it would look like God did answer his prayer. But he continued praying. He didn't know. Many of you hear me. You've been praying for three months four months you are about to stop you don't know what has been happening in the heavens for your sake gabriel said and i was with stool one and twenty days he said until michael came and he said i am come now to give you understanding pray until there is a manifestation satan can give up satan can give up see you are not trying to fight satan you are enforcing that which has been finished 
Are you seeing? So don't come in wondering, will I win? Will... No, no. Christ has established it. Your job is to enforce it in your life. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. Every door that has refused to answer to you under this anointing tonight, in the name that is above every other name, I command it to be open now. In the name of Jesus, doors of marriage be open. Any barren woman in this place, I command you to be a joyful mother of children. Any important man in this place, I command you to be a father of many children. Anyone trusting God for a job, we are agreeing here that the testimonies will start hearing from now till October. Miracle jobs, undeniable inexplainable my God confirm it from now till October fearful stable jobs those of you trusting God for capital to start business capital comes by favor period when it comes by favor you build with wisdom capital doesn't come by running around and begging I pray that that favor will come to you May you receive that favor. Anyone who is responsible for being a destiny helper in your life, I pray right now. Receive their ministry in the name of Jesus. See, let me announce to you. Any one of you trusting God for marriage, I'm saying it again. If God be God, I declare that before this year runs out, there will be supernatural, inexplainable, but undeniable marriages. Any affliction that is stopping anyone here under the sound of my voice, whether HIV, whether cancer, I don't care what it is. I command you to leave right now. I change SS genotype. Become AA now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has affected your prayer lives. I command that dry pole. Whatever affects your prayer life is killing you. I command let your prayer altar come strong. In the name of Jesus. Whatever makes you to doubt the word of God, you believe God here, but once you go out, you doubt. I command, may your faith be rooted in the name of Jesus. Your hands will command favor. You will go and do exploits. You will go and do exploits. Every hand against your destiny, I pull it down. Hear me any enchantment and any divination any activity of witches and wizards and necromancers i stand under this apostolic unction and in the name that is above all names i command their plans to be nullified in the name of jesus wherever you come from in this country north east south or west i confront the powers of darkness let god's people go let God's people go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe with all my heart that in this eight month, we are stepping into a level of exploit. We have seen certain things that God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I announced to us at the beginning of the year some of the things that the Lord showed me I don't stand here to speak until God has spoken to me I have no business talking about anything God has not told me I want you to mark it mark it write it this month will command levels of financial exploits it, it will literally bring fear 
the bible says you shall see it and you shall fear and your heart shall be enlarged for they got not into the land by their own swords neither did their arms save them because you have had a favor unto them watch out for the things that God is going to be doing I love announcing things before they happen because when they happen you will know that it is the mouth of the Lord before God makes a statement he will gauge himself and see whether he can bring it to pass then he will speak believe it for your loved ones believe it I've already announced it to my mother I told her mother this is what the Lord has said I want you to connect and I want you to believe it believe it blessed is she that believes for unto her I tell you you will see you will see a financial galore things will happen that will surprise people the Lord has shown me this I've seen it in the spirit. The Bible says that which I tell you in the secret place. Declare thou on the mountain tops. For when the powers are dethroned, you must have a testimony. Father, we give you thanks. Hallelujah. You're here. You've never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Listen to me. We are talking about taking mountains. It is those who belong to the Lord that can make this great exploit of faith. And I want to give you an opportunity right now inside and outside. You've never made a sincere decision. You know that your life, you, you cannot play games with your life. Hallelujah. Whether you've given your heart to the Lord but you found yourself derailing. Now is an opportunity and Jesus Christ is calling you. Hallelujah. You can make it right. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Whoever is making that decision, whether for the first time or renewing your commitment to get serious with the Lord, please leave your seat and come out here quickly. 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 If we have anyone like that, make sure you don't sit back. As the Lord is talking to you inside and outside. Inside and outside. Make sure you are making sincere commitments. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. They are coming. Appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you don't sit back. Now is the day of salvation. You have heard the word of the Lord. Yes, we give you praise. Yes, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Lift up your hands very quickly and I'll pray with you. I'd like you to repeat after me. Say it with understanding. Mean it from your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Today, I make a decision to stand for you. I declare that I live for you forever, forward ever, backward never. I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. From today, I receive eternal life into my spirit and I live a victorious Christian life. I'm an effective Christian in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you in Jesus name father thank you you brought these ones by yourself I pray that you preserve them in the name of Jesus no going back you will change absolutely your value system will change and you will begin to pursue the things of God I bless you with a deep hunger for the things of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ thank you for making this great decision Please follow the ushers. They will have your details. We'll contact you. We'll have a meeting with you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Just follow them. Tomorrow by 6 o'clock at chapel, we'll have a meeting with you. Hallelujah. Very quickly, tonight is your first time of worshiping with us. This is Koinonia. We love you and we celebrate you. Please appreciate them as they come. This is your first time. Please jump up quickly and come to the front. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Can you do that quickly? Appreciate them. We celebrate you. Koinonia. Bless them. Bless them. Thank you. Thank you for coming. There are people coming all the way from Joss. Emmanuel, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God brought you to bless you. He brought you to increase you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. Hallelujah.
were you blessed tonight? You will never be the same. Something will happen in your life. You will know you met God tonight. Hallelujah. We are here every Friday and God is building an army. God is preparing us with understanding. Hallelujah. I pray that you will keep going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we pray for them. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Bless them. Bless them. When we bless you, you are blessed. We are anointed. We are ambassadors representing the parliament of heaven. When we bless you, no devil can reverse that course. Because he's given us authority. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are blessed. You are blessed. Whatever ailment you came here with leaves you. You will go back with a tangible testimony that you met the Lord Jesus Christ. A testimony so compelling that you will not come alone the next time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord increase you. Please just walk down and you have the ushers. They will have your details and we'll get back to you in Jesus' name. Please appreciate them. Thank you. Let's take the following announcements quickly. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let's take the following announcements. I want to first and foremost appreciate everyone for making it today. Please celebrate yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. There is a spiritual curriculum that we are following. And God is granting us grace. We are catching up and making progress. It will make you a sign and a wonder. Please, if you do not have this, this are our evangelism and publicity materials. They are free. You can get them from the ushers. Just give somebody and the Lord will bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please take note of our official lines for the media and the protocol. Hallelujah. These lines are supposed to help us. The house is increasing. We have a lot more activities and we need some level of coordination. So please and please, as much as possible, um, communicate these lines, especially for those who are bringing invitations for ministration. Please give them these lines. And then I want to bring to your notice that all our teachings are free. Praise the Lord. Please. I'm saying it now because I know that the media has been complaining. And then, please let me announce, I don't have a Facebook page. Praise God. Praise God. Please. I, 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 you will not do it. I know that you are kingdom people. But please and please, nobody should open any Facebook page in my name or Twitter account. And then people do funny things. They beg people for money online and do all kinds of things they try to use the credibility of people please and please hallelujah our official facebook page is koinonia you can can you project it our official facebook and twitter pages please this is for security reasons and then listen we will never ask you to give money or anything on facebook you should know us man. we don't do those kinds of things hallelujah if there is a need for anything we communicate it here and if there is a need to give people an opportunity to be blessed, there are ways that we do it. Our official Facebook page. So please don't have anybody calling you in my name or doing any kind of thing for anything for ministry. The second thing I want to say is, um, it has come to my notice that there are a few people who uh, sad to say, just use my name for the publicity of their programs. Hallelujah. And sometimes you can see ministrations and see my name, even my picture, and I'm not aware I'm not coming. Or sometimes the people can, can discuss with the protocol, but maybe it's a ministration that I may not be able to make it. The people will still, after communicating, they will still put my name and put everything. Then when the crowd comes, they'll say, well, just to let you know that Joshua Selman is not around, but God is in this place, you know, and all of that. Don't do that. Praise God. I'm not an idol. These are the things that cause great men to fall. Hallelujah. Please. So this, these are our official Facebook um, pages. Please click like if you are not part of us. Click like and ask all your friends and loved ones to be part of it. You can receive posts and you can follow us online. Hallelujah. And then I know that the media has been working on YouTube too. I don't know how far they've gone there but they want to just take some extracts of the messages to put on YouTube for the viewing uh, pleasure. 
Okay, so that's it, our YouTube channel. Praise God. Appreciate the media. They are improving. And God is doing great things. Hallelujah. This is not just an advancement in ministry. This is to give people an opportunity. Hallelujah. And then let me say something again. I know that there are a few people. There are, I know, three radio stations that play our messages free of charge. We appreciate it. Honestly, we do. May the Lord bless you. But just to encourage you, please, um, it's always good to let the protocol department know. The protocol department is here to help us organize everything around our life. So we appreciate it. Uh, if you want to play maybe for your church, I know that there are churches and youth fellowships that use the messages for their retreat. We thank God for that. But when it comes to maybe going on air, whether videos or this, I beg you, please, for the sake of order, please, the protocol department is here. Contact them. Contact them. We are not going to charge you. This is not about money. It's just to be able to bring organization. Hallelujah. Does this make sense? Do you understand? You know the kind of society we are living in. And it's good that we watch these things from the onset before we start. So take note of all these announcements. And then our official counseling days are Mondays. Please, we don't counsel every day again. Hallelujah. Most times I'm traveling or having ministrations and we cannot do that. And you see that a number of the ministers are not around. Everybody is busy. There are lots of things. We are doing so the luxury of time is not there. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore eni you can download our messages on www.foreshared.com eternity network international replicating the fullness of god's life on earth